Ratios simplify in the same way as fractions. Here we have three bottles of poison and six bottles of antidote. So our poison to antidote ratio is three to six. As a fraction, that would be three over six. To simplify our ratio, we divide both sides by the highest common factor of both of our numbers. The highest common factor is the largest number we can divide both of our numbers by. The factors of three are one and three, and the factors of six are one, two, three, and six. So the highest number that goes into both is three, so that's our highest common factor. Now when we divide both sides of our ratio by three, it leaves our ratio in its simplest form. Let's try a few more harder examples. How about 11 to 99? The factors of 11 are 1 and 11, and the factors of 99 are 1, 3, 9, 11, 33, and 99. So our highest common factor is 11. We divide both sides by it, and we have our simplest form again, 1 to 9. I don't expect you to find the factor of both numbers every time, though that's impractical. So let's do another example, but in a slightly more realistic fashion. So how about 40 to 45? So when I see these numbers, I notice that five is obviously going to be a factor of 45. And I see that that is a factor of 40 because five times eight equals 40 and eight doesn't go into 45. So I uh, consider simplifying it by the five. So let's just do that. And if we do so, 40 divided by five equals eight and 45 divided by five equals nine. And then I look and see if I can simplify it any further. And we can't. So that means that we must have used our highest common factor. And if we hadn't, we would just be able to simplify further. So you don't need to obsess or worry about going through all of the factors or desperately finding the highest common factor. You just have to check afterwards to make sure that if you can simplify any further and eventually you will get your answer in the simplest form. Have a look at this one last example before we move on to the next scene. So here you see most of the time I'm only using two as a factor. I'm not suggesting that you should do this unless you were really stuck and you did just use any factor that you could find and then simplify further and further and further. I'm showing this not because it's the correct way of doing things, but for four reasons. One, if you had two very large numbers, you'd still be able to get the correct answer. Two, because it shows that you don't need to stress too much about absolutely getting the correct highest common factor every time. If you can find it quickly and it's easy, fine. That's brilliant. Use that. But if you can't, don't spend ages trying to find all of the factors of each number. The third reason is to show you that you always need to double check that you've simplified far enough. And the final and fourth reason is this is why we simplify in the first place. One to three is a much nicer ratio to understand and work with than 128 to 384. So what if we have three numbers in a ratio? Here we have three different types of sports balls in the ratio of three to six to 12. And we simplify this ratio in exactly the same way. If you notice three is a prime number, having only one and itself as a factor, then you can save time and test to see if three goes into the other numbers, which it does, allowing us to leave our ratio in the form one to two to four. How about decimals? They look pretty horrible, so let's figure them out too. 3.6 to 10.8. You can use the same technique as before and try to find the highest common factor, but it might be better instead to make these decimals whole numbers. If we multiply both sides by 10, because what you do to one side of a ratio, you must do to the other so that your numbers remain in the same ratio, then we have two whole numbers and we have the ratio 36 to 108. 12 and 18 are both factors of 36 and 108, but they're not the highest common factor. That's 36. By using 36 and dividing both sides of our ratio, we can now find our simplest form. And if you had used 12 or 18 instead, with a few more steps, you would still have been able to simplify your ratio.
How about unit ratio? Unit ratio is just another form of simplification where you'll be asked to put either the left or the right hand side of your ratio equal to one. Here we have three fossils and 54 shark teeth, meaning we have the ratio three to 54. And we're going to leave this ratio in the form one to n. What this means is we must make the left side equal to one. And whatever we do to the left side to make it equal one, we must also do to the right side. So we divide the left side by three and we divide the right side by three. Let's try one more example. Leave four to six in the form one to n. So we need four to become one. So four divided by four equals one. And what we do to one side, we must do to the other. So six over four, which simplifies to three over two giving us our answer. How about n to one instead? It's exactly the same concept. So let's just work through a couple of examples. We're also going to include some more fractions. So two to one over four or one quarter. To get one quarter to become one, which is what we're being asked to do because we're being asked to leave our answer in the form of n to one this time, we have to multiply it by four. And what we do to one side of the ratio, we must do to the other giving us our answer of eight to one. To finish, let's try one that looks more difficult. Two over three to seven over 10, and we're gonna leave it in the form n to one. To make seven over 10 or any fraction become one, we multiply it by itself flipped. And if we flip seven over 10, we get 10 over seven. The name for this flip number is a reciprocal. So the reciprocal of seven over 10 is 10 over seven. And now we multiply both sides of our ratio by 10 over seven, and we get our result of 20 over 21 to one. Now that we've done some theory on ratios, in the next video, we can look at some of their uses in more real world situations.